Hey everyone, I'm Nuzlocke Joe, and today I'm going to see if I can beat Pokemon Platinum using hardcore Nuzlocke rules, but with only Bug-type Pokemon. But first, let's be honest, Bug Pokemon kind of suck. Whether you look at this very official Reddit poll, where Pokefans said that Bug was the worst type, or you look at their strengths and weaknesses, or you even look at their stats, all of this paints a picture of Bug Pokemon being pretty bad. In spite of that, I've decided to shine a spotlight on some of the bug Pokemon who are actually pretty great. As always, I call myself Boy, and I name my rival Adidas. You know, the shoe brand that's super effective against killing bugs? As soon as I start, Adidas busts into my room to rifle through all my things. Then, he wants to find me $10 million if I'm late. Adidas may have that kind of money, but Boy does not. We tried to leaf from Twin Leaf Town, but can't cross the grass without Pokemon which basically means this place is a prison, and people without Pokemon are stuck here forever. That's dark. Right as we're about to get ourselves killed, Professor Rowan shows up to save us. And by save us, I mean he agrees to give us Pokemon so we can fight other monsters, as long as we don't, quote, endanger ourselves. But that's exactly what Pokemon do, you old man. As soon as Rowan leaves, Adidas and I endanger ourselves with our brand new Pokemon. I choose Turtwig so my rival would have Chimchar who is a well-known bug killer. Now that I can enter the grass, I go to Sand Gem Town, where Dawn escorts me literally five feet to the Poke Lab. I think I could have gotten there on my own. Here, I can finally name my Turtwig, and I call him Laif Bouget, which is French for leaf bug. Probably, I don't know French. But that makes him an honorary bug Pokemon for now. Rowan tries to get me to do work for him by filling up a Pokedex, but I know that child labor laws are a thing, so I decline. At which point he just stares at me, guilt tripping me into it, until I say yes. Alright then, for forcing me into this, I raid his fridge and eat all of his treats. How you like them candy apples? After getting Pokeballs, I run into a Cricketot, who I catch and name Searchmon. As Don and I walk through Jubilife, a creepy guy tries to sneak up on us and tells us that he is the worst Interpol agent ever, because he blew his own cover to a couple of kids. After that awkward incident, I try to leave Jubilife and I'm accosted by Adidas, who tries to squash my new bug. Now, even though he has a bird and a fire monkey, Searchmon still wins without getting hit. Mostly because Adidas is an idiot, apparently. I just keep using Fury Cutter, which starts out weak but doubles in power every turn, as he lowers my stats eight turns in a row. I honestly have no idea what he was thinking, but hey, I'm not complaining, I won. I make my way to Ouroburg City, where my rival is blocking the gym so I have to go find Rourke, the gym leader. But first, in the mining museum, I find a hiker who is absolutely enthralled by a giant lump of coal, because he's never seen one so big. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. I find Rourke, the gym leader, doing actual work, which just won't do because I need to beat him up. So, he heads back to his gym and I quickly follow, after doing some attack and defense EV training. My strategy here, well, it doesn't really exist. All I can do is use Fury Cutter and hope for the best. I have no other options. Against Geodude, I get two critical hits in a row as he misses one rock throw, then hits me with a really strong one. After another hit, he still survives, and I do too, but then he heals, which is fine because it's just powering up my Fury Cutter, as long as I don't miss. Two more hits and Geodude goes down. Out comes the Onyx, who does have really high defense, but my Fury Cutter is plenty strong, so it takes him out in one hit. The same happens to Rorik's last Pokemon, Kranidos. Admittedly, I did get really lucky against Geodude, because one more rock throw and I would have died, but this was also the first gym, so if I had to retry the run from here, it really wouldn't be the end of the world. Back in Jubilife, Don and I have a double battle against Team Galactic to uphold Professor Rowan's honor, or something like that. But since I taught Searchmon Rock Smash, this is pretty simple. At which point, Don tells me that the Professor is studying Pokemon evolution. Which is cool and all, but we kind of already knew that Pokemon were tied to evolution. I mean, that's what the floating box tells you when your Pokemon glow and change forms, but whatever. In Route 204, after a bit of searching, I find myself a Wormpool, who I name Wormmon. Not the most original name, but certainly not the worst of the run. Thankfully, Wormmon evolves into Silcoon and then Beautifly, so I now have a special attacker. Against Mars in the Valley Windworks, I have a pretty tough fight, to be honest. Wormmon gets toxic on the first turn, which is fun. He does take out the Zubat in two gusts, bringing out the tanking, and rudely named, if I do say so myself, Perugly. I decide to leave Wormmon in to take a fake out, and thankfully it doesn't crit. 
I swap to Searchmon, whose first Rock Smash lowers Ugly's defense. We trade Scratch and Rock Smash until finally Searchmon takes her ugly self out. And I probably should have done this before the fight, but now I check my Honey Trees, where I can get three new bug Pokemon throughout the course of the run. The first one gives me a female Burmy, who evolves into Wormadon, a Pokemon I have literally never used, and I'm sure I won't somehow mess up her evolution. I catch the Burmy and name her Palmmon. At another Honey Tree in Floroma Meadow, I find a male Combi who I don't want because only the females can evolve. Since there are plenty of honey trees out there, and very few viable encounters in this run, I just take the boy out. On Route 205, I find another male combi, but I spare this one to try and get some good karma. After escorting this lady out of Eternal Forest, I get to the second gym, finish the flower clock puzzle thing, and challenge Gardenia. Churchmon faces off against Turtwig. I start with Fury Cutter, as Turtwig sets up a Reflect, unfortunately. Next turn, he uses Sunny Day, and then gets a critical hit Grass Knot. Okay. And then my Fury Cutter misses, meaning its power gets reset. Great. He hits another Grass Knot as I restart the Fury Count. At this point, Reflect finally wears off, so a second Fury Cutter does take him out, but it would have been nice if it had been boosted a little bit more. You know, by not missing. Cherim comes out next, outspeeds with a Grass Knot, survives a Fury Cutter, and might have killed me with a critical Magical Leaf here, as I miss Fury Cutter again. At this point, I bring out Wormmon, who takes very little from a Magical Leaf and Grass Knot, and finishes off that plant with a Gust. Last is her Roserade, who, again, can't do too much damage to me. So, after a few Gusts, Gardenia heals, but then Wormmon gets a crit and wins me the second gym. Missing two 95% accurate Fury Cutters in one battle was pretty unlucky. But I guess I used up all of my luck in the first gym, so it is what it is. Adidas must have heard about Searchmon's Fury Cutter debacle, because almost as soon as I leave the gym, he tries to tell me that the secret to winning Pokemon battles is to never miss. I'll get you for that insult, man. Watch your back. And if you want to be on my good side, then you better subscribe, or else you're going to be lumped in with Adidas. I break into Team Galactic Headquarters, and once again, Looker exposes himself. No, not like that, you creep. Get your mind out of the gutter. He exposes himself as a member of Interpol and gets rid of this disguise. You people, I swear. Apparently, since no one saw this galactic member magically change his outfit and face two times in 30 seconds, I'm free to start exploring. I battle my way to the top where I find Jupiter waiting for me. Wormmon takes out the Zubat in two gusts, but does take a decent amount from wing attack in the process. Then Jupiter sends out her skunk tank. And I'm just gonna speed this up a lot. I don't really want to relay every single move here, suffice it to say I paralyze her and very slowly whittle her health down while healing with Morning Sun. At one point I do swap to Searchmon because I was smokescreened a bit too much, but after only a few turns I need to switch back or Searchmon could die. A few more gusts and it finally goes down. Again, that was a pretty rough fight. This is a common thread so far in the run. I tried to enter the bike shop to get the free bike to which I am now entitled, seeing as how I just saved the bike guy from Team Galactic, but Cynthia shows up and tries to pawn off an egg on me. I decline, but she won't let me enter the shop until I take the darn thing. Fine. After finally getting a bike, but before leaving the city, I talk to this old guy who gives me an explorer kit, and then wants to mentor a young child in the ways of being alone in a deep, dark cave. Now, I'm not the one to read into things too much, but this seems like a perfect example of stranger danger if I ever saw it. So, I say no. On a tree in Route 207, I finally find a female combi, who I catch and name Wasmon. At this point, there is only one more viable encounter I can get from these honey trees, and fortunately, there is one just north in Route 206. It takes a while, but eventually I catch Heracross and name him Kabuterimon, and this was the inspiration for the naming scheme in the run. Thankfully, Kabuterimon has guts and not swarm, which is great because the last time I got to use a Heracross, he had Swarm, and I hated it. In Mount Cornet, I run into Cyrus, who blabs about things he thinks are important, but I don't really care. I'm just trying to get gym badges here, man. I don't care about your world-ending nonsense. Not until I'm forced to care, anyway. I then find the Berry Master, who tries to pretend that he's not the one who made up his own nickname, but I see right through that. People don't naturally call you the Berry Master. Come on. I try to get to Salacian Town, but my journey is halted by a bunch of grown men so excited about Pokemon eggs that they won't let me pass. Which seems like a completely normal response, 
to hearing about a poke egg. In Hearth Home City, I found out that my mom has been leading a double life this entire time. She never told me about any of her contests. With my life in ruins and my childhood memories destroyed, I try to go on a relaxing stroll with my Pokemon in Amity Square, but am promptly informed that my Pokemon are just too ugly. How dare you call Kabuterimon ugly? Just look at this uh, epitome of cuteness here. Enraged, I take out my anger against Fantina, the third gym leader. This fight would have been a lot easier if I'd known that after evolving, Wormadon can't actually change her cloak. But since I've never used one, I didn't realize that. Meaning that Palmon is stuck in Sandy Cloak, even though Trash Cloak would have been perfect here. Anyway, in the fight against Fantina, I start with Kabuterimon against her Duskull. Kabuterimon uses Aerial Ace as Duskull burns me, which is actually perfect. A Guts Boosted Thief finishes off the Duskull, as well as the Haunter. With my low health, I survive a Psybeam from his Magius, but it looks like a crit might have killed me, so my calculations were a bit off. Thief does a ton to her, steals her Citrus Berry, and heals Kabuterimon back up. And I was really proud about this silly play here. This means that Fantina has to use a potion, so I use Thief again and unfortunately don't get a crit. That's okay. Since it's no longer safe for Kabuterimon to stay in, I need to swap to the newly evolved Wasmon, who has really good defenses. Miss Magius' Shadow Ball won't kill me, even with a crit, and Wasmon responds with a power gem for the knockout. So maybe let me in the park next time, eh? And I won't take my anger out on these Pokemon. As I try to leave town, Adida sneaks up on me. But my still-burned Kabuterimon makes really short work of his entire team. This is his payback for insulting my second gym battle. With that slight road bump out of the way, I take a small detour to find myself a Scyther, who almost kills half my team, by the way, before I can catch it. This guy is going to be pretty awesome, I can tell. I name him Sneemon. On my way to fight Maylene, I run into Dawn and then Crasher Wake, who made up his own theme song because he's just that cool. After Crasher leaves, Dawn is struck silent by his manliness. To prove that I too am a manly man, or a manly boy, I guess, a man-child, perhaps? That word has always creeped me out. I destroy some weights by smacking a punching bag. And now it's time to smack Maylene too. But not like that, we don't hit girls, unless it's a girl Pokemon. That's fair game. A burned Kabuterimon one-shots her Metacham with Aerial Ace and her Machoke as well, countering some of the burn damage with a Shell Bell along the way. Her Lucario does outspeed, but hits a relatively weak Metal Claw and then falls to an Earthquake. We now have half the Sinnoh badges. Impressed by my newfound manliness, Dawn asks me for help. So I beat up a few bullies because I'm a gentleman. On my way to Pastoria City, I sneak by all of these trainers like some cool secret agent. I hope Looker is watching because this is how you avoid notice. You don't introduce yourself to the first kid who sees you. I then find a damsel in distress who needs help finding a key. But since this will mildly inconvenience me, I decide that I am no longer a gentleman and I just leave her locked outside. I finally reach Pastoria City and after hearing about how great this marsh is, I check it out. Here, there are two possible encounters, Yanma and Scorpi. But for obvious reasons, I want Yanma. Fortunately, they are found in different grass patches so I can guarantee a Yanma encounter. Unfortunately, it's still a safari zone so he could easily run away. After accidentally throwing a ball at Quagsire, whoops, or should I say, whoopers, I find a Yanma, so I throw a ball and immediately catch him. That was actually pretty awesome. Unfortunately, the name I have to give him is Yanmamon. It's not great, I know, but I don't pick the names here. The Digimon, I mean the Pokemon, pick their own names. Okay, since this was the last encounter, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. If you hadn't realized yet, the names are all Digimon. I don't expect you to recognize most of these names, because even I don't know most of these names, but if you didn't at least recognize Kabu Terimon, I don't know what to tell you, man. You must have had a sad childhood. After learning ancient power, Yanmamon evolves and becomes my number one special attacker. Sorry, Wormmon, you had a good run. It's at this point I find a fatal flaw in my team. None of them can learn fly. Just to be clear, I have four flying types right here, but none of them can fly. Whatever, I can just catch a bird here, teach it fly, and I'm sure this will not have a negative impact at any point in the run. Before fighting Crasher Wake, I EV train Yanmamon against Ghastly's in the old chateau. Because it's not really one of my runs without a ghost massacre, am I right? 
Now I'm ready to fight Crasher. He starts with Gyarados against my new Yanmomon. An ancient power does more than half to him, and Gyarados' waterfall doesn't kill me, even if it had crit. One more ancient power does finish it off, but I was kind of hoping for an Omni Boost. Oh well, I wasn't really counting on it. Floatzel comes out and threatens me with an Ice Fang, so I swap to Kabuterimon. Who gets crit? Well, that's fun. I could survive another non-crit, but I don't know if I want to risk it, because I really like Kabuterimon. So, time to change my plans mid-fight. I bring out Searchmon, anticipating an Aqua Jet, but nope. He gets hit by two brines and does a decent amount with X Scissor, at least. If Searchmon died, I'd have been okay with that, but I don't really want to sack him just yet. So I bring back out Yanmon, who takes an Aqua Jet and should kill with a Psychic at this HP, which he does. I didn't expect the Float Soul to be quite that rough. Out comes the Quagsire, and since he has Rock Tomb, I swap to Kabuterimon, who tanks it. I don't think Close Combat will kill, so I go for a Brick Break to heal with Shell Bell, and after seeing how much it did, Close Combat would have totally killed. Kabuterimon survives another Rock Tomb with 22 HP, and in case Wake decides to heal, I do use Close Combat to finish off the Quagsire. After beating Wake, Team Galactic tries to blow up the Great Marsh for some reason. I chase down the perpetrator, take him out, and meet up with Cynthia, who tells me how to sneak past a violent horde of ducks. In Celeste Town, I find a guy who is obsessed with glasses, and he gives me three different kinds. They're actually really useful too. In the Celeste Town ruins, Cyrus threatens to ruin some guy's ancient cave painting, which just won't do. So we start to fight, but Yanmon, now wearing the new choice specs I just got, decimates his team with ancient power. It's kinda sad how bad Cyrus is right now. It would be a shame if he took revenge on us later, but I'm sure that'll never happen. Anyway, after saving this wall doodle, Cynthia tells me to go to Canalave City. Excuse me, I am my own man, I go where I want to go. So, completely independent of Cynthia, I decide to go to Canalave City because I hear there's a pretty great library there. Before I can get to the gym, I have to fight Adidas. But again, this is relatively simple. Yanmaman, with wise glasses this time, ancient powers, or psychics, basically his entire team. The one exception is Roserade, and that's because Yanmaman went over the level cap here, so I had to swap out. The fight against Byron is similarly simple. As you might expect, a black belted Kabuterimon just destroys his entire team. Now some of his Pokemon do have Sturdy, but as we learned in the past, Sturdy in Gen 4 really sucks. So it's a simple win for me. We only have two badges left. I meet up with my old pals in the library, just in time to see more galactic bombs go off on the news. Now at this point, there's a whole story section about going to the lakes and trying to fight Team Galactic that I'm just going to skip because this is taking too long. I will just say, poor little Magikarps. They deserve better than that. After all that, I'm trekking through the snow and I find Adidas, who has the high ground, which apparently means He's better than me now, so I should just give up. I get to Candace, the next gym leader, and lead with Kabuterimon. Sneasel does have Aerial Ace, but with all my EV training, Kabuterimon outspeeds and knocks it out with a Brick Break. This baits out the Frostlass, who has Psychic. But since even a crit won't kill me, I'm safe to stay in. And she goes for Double Team anyway. Kabuterimon sees the real Frostlass and knocks her out with a Shadow Claw. With Frostlass gone, it's smooth sailing and close combats for the last two Pokemon. That fight went really well, and I didn't even take any damage. We've had two really easy gyms in a row. With seven badges, I break into Galactic HQ just in time to see Cyrus give his whole We Will Rule the World speech. I give it a 7 out of 10. It's a bit cliche at this point, but he does an okay job. Looker, on the other hand, was mesmerized by it. Gives it an 11 out of 10. I sneak further into 8Q and pick a fight with Cyrus. Sneemon starts off with a Swords Dance as Sneasel screeches. I did have a Yacha Bear here to minimize ice damage, but I didn't end up needing it, which kind of bummed me out because I spent a lot of time getting this berry. Anyway, after the attack boost, Sneemon one-shots his whole team. What I tell you, Cyrus is a complete pushover. There's nothing to worry about this guy. Jumping ahead to Spear Pillar, Adidas and I begin a double battle against some of the Team Galactic executives. And my strategy here is basically to hope that they target Adidas more than me. So they both start off with Bronzors who set up a light screen as well as a reflect. But overall, this battle goes remarkably well. They target Adidas more than me, so my Sneemon can stay out for a good long time and can slowly whittle away at everyone's health. He does use a Swords Dance at one point to try and help out, but until the reflect finally wears off, he's still not doing a ton of damage. 
but I get through without losing anybody. Things are going pretty well. After the fight, Cyrus does some sort of ritual and basically summons the Poke Devil, who sucks us into his distortion world. And I've gotta say, I'm not a big fan of this place. I feel like this whole Team Galactic arc is a bit too drawn out for my tastes. But getting Giratina at the end is pretty cool, I guess. Here, I have one last fight against Cyrus, and this one is for all the marbles. I start with Sneemon, who faces off against a Houndoom. I use Swords Dance, and Sneemon takes a high roll flamethrower that would have killed me if I didn't have Focus Sash. It also could have killed me if it burned, but thankfully it didn't. I can't account for everything. I respond with a one hit KO Aerial Ace. Hontro comes out and is really bulky, but suffers the same fate. Next is Crobat, who I barely outspeed, that's why Sneemon is such a high level here, and I knock him out too. But Sneemon's reign of terror ends with the Gyarados' Intimidate. Since I'm so low on health, and I really like Sneemon, I swap to Vespiqueen, and hope that he didn't use Ice Fang. But he did. That's okay, I have a Yachaberry, so I don't really need to worry about it too much. I then try to Toxic, but get Frozen Solid. That really sucks. Next turn, I'm still frozen, and it becomes clear to me that someone is probably going to die. Unfortunately, I had to bring B-Barrel here for the HMs, but because I'm a complete idiot, I forgot to drop off the Chitat. Remember when I said none of my Pokemon could fly and it probably wouldn't have a negative impact on the run? Well, it does right here, because if I didn't have this flying bird, I could have had a less important Pokemon who I could easily sacrifice. But I don't have one, because I'm an idiot and I just forgot to drop him off at the box. I bring out Yanwan and hope for the best, as I get Ice Fanged. At least I wasn't frozen. I go for Ancient Power, which even with Choice Specs doesn't kill, and then Gyarados does take me out. I bring out Kabuterimon, whose return is strong enough to knock out the Gyarados. Cyrus's last Pokemon, Weevil, fake outs me, and then does a ton with an Ice Punch. But it didn't crit, and then he goes down to a close combat, which did crit though it was unnecessary. Had I gotten that crit just a few turns ago, Yanomon would still be alive. Okay, I take back every negative word I ever said about Cyrus. The earlier fights were certainly easy, but he got payback by taking out my number one special attacker. And I'm really bummed that I lost Yanomon, but I'd rather it be him over Sneemon or Kabuterimon at the very least. After beating Cyrus, I wrap up all of this Distortion World stuff by capturing the Devil in a Master Ball, and then I crawl out of the depths of hell. I can't be stuck in here for all eternity, because I still have one more gym to beat. Before that fight, I replace my really good special attacker with one not so good special attacker. But it's the best I can do. The fight against Volkner is really anticlimactic after that Cyrus debacle. I lead with a pre-poison Kabuterimon, less because of guts and more because I just don't want to be paralyzed. The Jolteon outspeeds, of course, does a bit of damage with Iron Tail, and then goes down to an Earthquake. Once again, Kabuterimon has a Shell Bell to offset some of the poison damage here. Not that it's needed, because everyone else also goes down to a single Earthquake without ever hitting Kabuterimon. So the last three gyms were completely easy, but they were broken up by a very difficult Cyrus fight. After getting my eighth badge without breaking a sweat, I find Johto's gym leader Jasmine hanging out on a beach, which is fine and all, but if she's here, then who's taking care of her precious Amphros so far away? Did she rein in another random trainer to get medicine for it? I make my way through Victory Road with minimal trouble, but before getting to the Elite Four, Adidas tries to squash me one more time. Even with the Intimidate at the very beginning, a guts boosted Kabuterimon punches his bird out of the sky, and then he takes out the Fire Monkey with an Earthquake, the Fat Sumo with a close combat, it didn't need to be crit here by the way, squashes Adidas fake Kabuterimon with an Aerial Ace, and does the same thing to his flower thing. But then, Kabuterimon meets his match, a Float Soul. Now normally, Kabuterimon could totally take this guy, but he has a priority Aqua Jet, and I think I've lowered my defenses a little bit too much, so I can't risk it. I bring out Searchmon for his first appearance in what feels like forever, and I forgot to teach him some good moves. Whoopers, I go for a Parish Song, and the next turn I realize I could have just killed him with two X scissors. Oh well. I then bring out Wasmon, who takes nothing from an Aqua Jet, and then a bit more from an Ice Fang, before beating the Parish Song count to the win. And for the last time in the run, we beat my rival. But apparently, I need to teach my Pokemon some more moves before we're ready for the Elite Four. Eventually, we head into the Elite Four and start with Eren. 
One small change I'm making here is that instead of using the level cap of the strongest Elite Four member, each member now has their own level cap. And I'll just force feed my Digimon rare candies in between fights. It makes things a bit more fair. That being said, Eren and his bug Pokemon are no match for me, because Sneemon is a beast. He outspeeds and one-shots the Onmega with an Aerial Ace. Vespiqueen does survive a hit, but just uses Defend Order. Now, since I anticipate a heal, I use Swords Dance, which trumps Vespiqueen's Defend Order, so another hit takes it out. Next is Drapion, and even with the attack boost, he does survive an Aerial Ace and hits a pretty strong Ice Fang, but one more Aerial Ace knocks him out. Another fake Kabutarimon comes out, and I put it out of its misery. Last is the evolved form of Sneemon himself, who is a lot slower with all that metal. With the Swords Dance, he goes down in a single hit. Nice. One down, three to go. For the next fight, it took me a little while to try to come up with some sort of strategy, because I wanted to avoid just doing Swords Dance too much, but I couldn't really make this one work. So, a pre-poisoned Kabuterimon comes out and goes for a Swords Dance, as Wishcast just uses Sandstorm. That's fine. Then a return takes it out, and as always, I heal with a Shell Bell. Gliscor is next, but also goes down to return. The Golem, and the Rhyperior, and the Hippodon all go down to a single close combat. Heracross may not be quite as fast as Scyther, but he's still a pretty quick bug. Now, you might think that the Flint fight would be really tough, because bugs are weak to fire. But it's literally just an Earthquake sweep from Kabuterimon. He outspeeds and one-shots every single Pokemon. Against Lucian, you probably expect a really easy fight because bugs are resistant to telekinesis or something. But I regret to inform you, that's exactly what happens. Sneemon one-shots his entire team, with the exception of Bronzong, who just sets up a Calm Mind and wastes his turn. So maybe bugs beat psychic Pokemon because they ruin their concentration? Because they're so creepy and ugly, apparently? And yeah, I'm still a little bit bitter about that. Anyway, the Elite Four is done, and all we have left is the champion, who just so happens to be Cynthia. Well, color me Pikachu surprised face. Start with Sneemon, of course, who sets up a Swords Dance, as Spiritomb uses Dark Pulse, which lets me use one more Swords Dance to survive another hit, and then I start Aerial Ace sweeping her team. Now, this should be pretty clean, though there is a small possibility that one of her Pokemon actually survives an Aerial Ace. Can you guess who it is? Well, it's the Garchomp, of course, who does survive and kill Sneemon with a flamethrower. Son of a gun. This was the second to last Pokemon in the entire run. I'm so close to the end I can taste it, and they take another Pokemon from me. Sneemon, out of everybody, I love this guy. Enraged by his friend's death, Kabuterimon breaks out of his Pokeball and smacks Garchomp in the face with a return. Cynthia's last Pokemon, Roserade, falls into the earth, never to be seen or heard from again. This is what happens when you anger Kabuterimon. With Cynthia down and one more Pokeball empty, we have officially won the run. On the one hand, I'm glad that we completed the run, and the distortion fight against Cyrus could have gone a lot worse, but on the other, I wish Sneemon were around to share in our victory. It's a bit lonely without him. If you've made it all the way to the end, don't forget to subscribe so you can see the Pokemon Black run I have coming out next. I hope to see you in Unova.